Do I have a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. All right. Um, so we got a couple minutes before 620. I did 620. 620. Okay. All right. Okay. 18 Cliff Road. Okay. <coughs> Yep. And Jim, you did the review on this. Have you got a minute to just define on? You're hearing separately. I guess. I was going to say, I think maybe we should just do the review before we get to the project. Give us your thoughts on that. I appreciate it. Okay, for the for the record, Jim O'Connell, coastal geologist and a certified floodplain manager with Coastal Advisory Services. Um, I was requested by the agent and the commission to do a peer review of this project, um, which I did. Um, I did get some additional information um, today, actually, and I did pr um, provide a revised report today as well. Um, that doesn't change my conclusions, which fortunately you don't have to be concerned about reading the revised report. I just um, added a little clarity to what I'm about to say here. But the conclusions of my report in my November report and this December report um, remain the same. So I, I was, uh, I'll start out with um, this two projects I was asked to review, both 18 and 20 um, Cliff Road South on Hummer Rock. Uh, the resource areas, as, as uh, Jeff just said, the resource areas that, that are applicable to your review are um, Coastal Bank, land subject to coastal storm flowage, and of course the buffer zone to Coastal Bank as well. Uh, in terms of the Coastal Bank, you know, um, Coastal Bank is, as you know, is defined as uh, the seaward side of an elevated landform other than a coastal dune that lies at the landward edge of land subject to tidal action, a coastal beach, or any other wetlands for that matter. Um, so in the definition, it's really important to distinguish that the, to be um, a coastal bank, it has to be land, not a coastal engineering structure. And that's a distinction that 
oftentimes has to has to be made in, in many hearings. Um, so uh, the seaward side of this landform, there's only really one seaward side of the landform on both of these properties, and that's obviously the seaward east side. Um, it's fronted, as Jeff said, by a vertical concrete seawall with a tow revetment, a riprap tow revetment, uh, tow revetment um, in front of the vertical concrete seawall. Um, and then it basically changes orientation where the structures are proposed to be elevated, uh, changes direction, and it's not seaward facing anymore. So the top of the coastal bank in this particular location, uh, on both of these sites, is the landform that's immediately landform, landward of the vertical concrete seawall. Um, I know it's, um, in this particular case, it's, it's, only a, it's only a matter of less than a foot between whether you want to use the front of the seawall or the landform behind the seawall, but it's, the land, it's where the earth begins behind the vertical concrete seawall is the, is, the, is, the, uh, is, the, is the top of Coastal Bank. Now, top of Coastal Bank is, um, is defined similarly in your regulations as it is in the DEP regulations, but your top of Coastal Bank delineation criteria differs significantly uh, from the DEP um, criteria. Um, in your regulations, the top of Coastal Bank is the first significant break in slope above the 100-year flood elevation or the 100-year flood or the landward limit of the 100-year flood <coughs> elevation, whichever is more landward. So in this particular case, um, I have to speak about the other resource area, land subject to coastal storm flowage, because that plays into where the top of the coastal bank is going to be. So it's not necessarily um, where, we d where we both just said, because if you use your regulations, you've got to go to the first significant break of slope above the 100-year flood elevation, or the 100-year flood elevation, which is more landward. Um, in, my <coughs> in my research, looking at the um, flood insurance rate maps and the flood hazard, uh, flood hazard data, um, the Land subject to coastal storm flowage, the land limit of the 100-year floodplain is not as what was on the original plans that, were s that I received. I did re receive a revised plan this afternoon, which I did have a chance to look at. But in the original plan, um, which you may have in front of you, I don't know if you saw the revised plan, but in the original plan, the land limit of land subject to coastal storm flowage was put on the top of the seawall. And, uh, and, and I find it difficult, and this is teaching me a lesson <laughs> as well, on, the, on both plans, um, there was a color blue that was used to delineate the land subject to coastal storm, the land will limit of the land subject to coastal storm flowage. Um, so if you look at these plans, you more than likely won't see the delineation saying land subject to coastal storm flowage on the, I believe it's the, the number 20 plan because it's light blue. So if you're not given color, it, it barely, barely comes out. Um, I, I, I had to really search for it on, the, on, on my black and white plans and then go back to the color to find out where they had delineated the land subject to coastal storm flowage. But they had, it, uh, they had it initially on the original plan along the top of the seawall. That does not coincide with what I found on the flood insurance rate map. It's slightly landward. The landward limit of land subject to coastal storm flowage is slightly landward on the south side, south seaward side of number 20, and, it's, and it inundates some um, quite significantly on landward on number 18. In fact, the land subject to coastal storm flowage on, the, on number 18, which is more, more south, more closer to the barrier beach, um, actually goes almost right up to the building itself. Um, the deck, the seaward deck on number 18 is within land subject to coastal storm flowage and it's a velocity zone. So that is, that's, that's, that's significant that in this particular case. Now, because the houses are being proposed to be elevated on open piles, um, it's going to allow the floodwaters, at least on 18, to flow under the deck. And importantly, the landward limit of the velocity zone on here is the area, th th the velocity zone seaward of the landward limit of the line on both of these is the area that will be inundated with greater than a three foot wave under 100 year storm conditions. FEMA uh, several years ago has delineated now um, the limit of moderate wave action, which is basically still wave action, but it's less than three feet. Um, a lot of research by FEMA over the years uh, um, in, in their post storm um, assessments they have now writ written in their advisory uh, material that 
a one and a half foot wave is significant is is, is enough to cause significant um, structural damage to buildings. So they have limit. So they have now mapped the limit of moderate wave action on almost all their firms um, in Massachusetts. But if the if the limit of between the three foot wave and the one and a half foot wave, the limit of moderate wave action is less than 100, approximately 100 feet. You won't see it on your map. So in this particular case, um, we know that there'll be wave action between a, a foot and a half and three, basically hitting 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 the area where these buildings are. But it's not <coughs> but it's not mapped. So from a legal standpoint, um, you can only go what's written on the map. Uh, the flood insurance rate map, unless you have evidence otherwise to suggest that that it's moving more landward. Uh, my point, my point is, is that um, because these, both of these houses are being elevated, number twenty, I believe, is being elevated. Number twenty, the building in number twenty is, is out of land, subject to coastal storm flowage. So, as you get that less than three foot wave, it's going to cascade under the building. But that is not a consideration for the commission because it's not mapped as being in the floodplain. So in, as far as I see is number 20, I believe they're elevating it, um, I think only about a foot above grade, but they're not in the floodplain, so that's not a consideration. They are within the fifth, half of the building in, on number 20 is within the 50 foot buffer to the top of Coastal Bank, but they're not um, altering the Coastal Bank. The Coastal Bank is armored, so they're not doing anything in this proposal to um, the Coastal Bank itself. So there's really no, um, there's no performance standards that are being violated in terms of the coastal bank or even I think the buffer to coastal bank because the when all is said and done, the building will be elevated on open piles, um, possibly higher than it is now. I didn't get the, I didn't get the, I don't know what the elevations are for the existing building. Um, it looks like it's at grade or, or maybe a foot or less above, but they're still going to rebuild it and they're going to re rebuild it larger. Interestingly, the pre-existing buildings, the existing buildings, the existing building footprint is the same on both plans, which obviously is not correct. Hmm. It, it may be correct on number 20, which is the higher up the, higher up the bluff, but on number 18, um, they're not enlarging that building. They're basically just elevating the existing building in place. But if you look at the uh, existing, th what they're calling the existing footprint, it's much larger. I don't think that's an issue. It's just something that you have to be aware of that shouldn't be on the plan because it looks like they're really shrinking the house down, but they're not doing anything to it other than elevating it. So it's, it's, not, it's not necessarily a, a consideration, but it's something that I think you need to keep an eye out on. If there was ever the reverse, it would be critically important. Very, very faint. You'll see it on both. They're identical. He's saying that's the zoning, it's the zoning. It says it says building footprint and that's all it says. I didn't it doesn't say the word zoning, so I just saw building footprint on there. Um, but you know. That's a consideration, and, and you've got that on both. So that's the zoning, zoning footprint. The, the building envelope. The, 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 the area that you could build. That could like that, that's, that's what I mean. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, well, that's that's a good clarification. I did receive the narrative today. There was no narrative submitted with the the initial notices of intent, but the but if you know how to read the plans, you'll you'll get what the project says. So, so I think the I think the, you know the bottom line is. Um, in terms of the considerations for the commission, um, they're elevating them on open piles, which will, which will not cause any violation of your land subject to coastal storm flowage regulations. DEP does not at present have 
performance standards for land subject to coastal storm floors. So by elevating them on open piles, um, they're not going to change the velocity. They're not going to change. They're not going to um, cause any change in wave direction or uh, flowing water direction because they're on pi basically on piles. 18 in the existing footprint. Number 20 is being enlarged, but that's also being being elevated. Again, I don't know what the existing uh, elevation is of the first floor on number 20 uh, because I couldn't I couldn't see that um, on the on the plans itself but it's not in the floodplain so it's really not a consideration of the Commission so I don't um, I don't really um, I, the building the state building code is not but this is just an education piece in case you don't know the state building code is not a consideration um, of the Commission of course but the land subject to coastal storm flowage does go under the deck. So part of that, the building is an inland subject to coastal flows, but the deck is. If the deck is, is structurally attached to the building, they'll have to discuss that with the building inspector because that means the entire building has to be above the BFE. Right now it's almost, they have the first floor, two feet, the, fir the, the first floor is at the base flood elevation, the elevation of the 100-year storm, but the lowest horizontal structural member may have to be con uh, a consideration. Are you talking 18 right now? Yes, I yes. Eight, uh, hard yeah. eight, the deck on 18 is within, is within yeah. land subject to coastal storm flow. That was a question I had that we were going to debate tonight, but I received a revised plan today, and they did change the land with limit of the floodplain on this revised plan, coincident with what I saw uh, in my review of the flood insurance rate maps. So now I think the revised plan is, is, is accurate. Um, the intent on that lot 18 is that the, um, the deck will not be attached to the house. So That's the existing deck will remain, but it's going to be reconstructed. And then um, at a lower elevation in the house will be located. Um, as far as the actual elevation, there's no requirement um, because of this out of the velocity zone. What we're expecting is that we had a proposed first floor of one foot higher than the floodplain. Jeff, is there another set of piles? If that deck's going to be independent, well, no, but I'm, I'm seeing like a front set of piles and a mid set of piles, but it would almost be that there'd have to be another set of piles. Yeah, there will be another set right along. And that's the that's the importance of the narrative. That's that's not stated in the narrative anywhere, which I only received today. But but in, in the narrative, if you know, if you, if it, if it was clear that the deck was not structurally connected to the building, then that puts the you know that negates the requirement to elevate everything above the BFE, the base flood elevation. Okay. It was a good. Not, not attached to the house that we did years ago with some other houses down there. Um, should it even be a removable deck there? We've done that before too. I'm, I'm just curious. I, yeah, no, I think that's a, I think that's a very, good, very good question. Um, in in your performance standards, um, you don't mention anything about debris from storms where you have decks and other. Um, structures below the base flood elevation. That um, that deck could your performance standards only state that the requirement is that you don't change the the um, the velocity of the water. You don't accelerate the velocity of the water, and you don't change the direction of the flood waters. Um, that would that would cause an adverse impact. And in my opinion, because these are on open, they're going to be on open piles. I, um, I don't see a significant change in velocity or in the direction, a change in the direction of flow. But it would be very wise to make them removable during the winter storm season because you know what happens out there as well as I. And it, it, well you, you could have an issue. Before. I don't know. Yeah. This, that's why I was asking you, so this is a place where we possibly should, you know, ask that the deck has to come out in November something. Yeah, and, it's, and it's, it wouldn't take much to elevate it.
What is the, what is the elevation of what is the elevation of the deck? I don't have the elevation. I just have a photograph um, that shows that, that, that I would approximate two feet off the ground. Two feet. I knew it. Yeah, I knew it was. I knew it was. I knew it was off the ground. Yeah. But the point is, is we, if it's yeah. below the base flood elevation, yes, you know, th yeah, yeah. Th this is just going to be it's infrequently. It's not going to be like you see on the Barrier Beach. This area will will be infrequently inundated with the hundred year flood only because it's it's much higher than the Barry Beach itself. But it will at some point get the hundred year storm, the you know, the blizzard of seventy eight or the equivalent, which was not a hundred year storm, the October ninety one storm. But certainly the wave characteristics caused as much damage as they did in the blizzard of seventy eight. Right, well so yeah. 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 So, be, so you know, so a conclusion. I, I, I see that. I think it's a good project. I think they are elevating the both buildings on pilings. I don't see any violations of your performance standards, but it would be helpful if we got a narrative and much more clarity uh, in the beginning. Jen? Um, I'm okay for now. Um, so if I, uh, I believe. 18 is the lower house. Am I correct if I get it back? It's the lower house. It's the one that is not raised at all currently. No, it, 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 it's raised on, um, on um, concrete block so piers. It is eight, okay, eight, so yeah, 18 is closer, but it, it is But right elevated. now there's concrete blocks that are on the ground holding the house up. Am I yes. correct? So uh, this may even be a foolish question, but the water will be, the direction of the water will be changed a little bit on a flood situation if the house is raised because now it's where it can't flow through now it will flow through wouldn't it I don't think it will change significantly because because there's concrete block piers mm -hmm. and now they're going to round pile uh, basically driven piles mm -hmm. um, elevating it I believe only a, a foot yeah, yeah. A foot but my, what I'm getting at is it will flow under the house yes and it will keep going will it not instead right now there's resistance to it it may not even, I, I, I understand there may not be restrictions against it. I'm just trying to get a picture in my mind of what would happen in that situation. But, but the, the difference between the concrete block piers and the, and the round driven piles, mm -hmm. I, I think the, the, the change in, in the way the waves react between the both of those, I don't think would be significant. You're still gonna, you know, they still, they'll still interfere with water. They'll cause turbulence and they'll cause a refraction around them. And, but the, the right. turbulence, I think, will be primarily withheld within the within the lot itself I, I understand everything but, you're but saying but wouldn't the water continue to go across the street oh absolutely as it does now it, it, right, right now it's up on yeah. concrete piles not a full foundation it doesn't okay it doesn't there's no. a picture he there's, just, a, there's no, a picture in my it. report of the of both yep. houses I got it yeah okay no you've helped thank you Lisa any questions Amy um, do we have water health approval? No. Um, for the upper lot, this one, the reason rebuild, we, as part of the project, they're replacing the septic system, and we are still waiting on it. <coughs> don't anticipate any changes coming from that septic. Do you know when we get that Um I actually don't require a public hearing. But would you, do you think you'll meet with them before two weeks when you finish your orders and well, the, the, There won't be a meeting for that. It's something that they're waiting on um, some additional information for us, and then they can approve it without meeting. So will it get done in the next two weeks? Yes. I would think so, yeah. But I, I don't see any, I don't foresee any change. No, I understand that. I just, you know, wanted to know if it was forthcoming. Yeah. So it's we're not a couple of months away. Yeah, so what we're waiting on is um, we did the perk up in the upper C1 horizon, which is more of a tighter sandy wall. Okay. And the second took up the entire lawn area right up to the sea wall. But down below that, a few feet deeper, is a is beautiful coarse sand. So we're able to do a remove and replace. And now the septic is entirely outside of that 50 foot buffer. Okay. So it's only that very small area. Yeah. But as a formality, we have to take a sieve sample of that sand and send it to the lab, and that's what we're waiting on. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, and the septic is in that plan, correct, Jeff? Yeah, the septic is three rows of chambers right here. Okay. We 
we, um, we don't have the final structurals. We have a progress set. Okay. So I think that we definitely, if we're going to close without those, we're going to need a special condition specific to the file. So these are these are driven piles. <laughs> driven piles, yeah. And the plan that you have is done by the architect. Right? Um, our design. Um, the river more structure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, just a couple of questions for Jim from Jeff, both of you. So. How? much higher would number 18 need to be if that deck were attached to the house? We'd have to be up around elevation 27 for the first floor. So if the floor is 23, top pile would be 25, and then two feet of frame would be 27. So about... Holy crap. About three feet higher than so the top of the need an elevator. When you do TOF, is that top of foundation or top of finished floor? Left it on TOF You're right. For both these plans, you have a top of TOF. So is it top of foundation or top of the finished floor? No, it doesn't. And then we're proposing to, to raise it to a minimum of 24. But you're saying that if that if the deck were attached, that would really have to be 27. If you if you look at the architectural, it'll show you. Uh, what I saw was TOF top of top of it was pointing to the floor on the right. on the architectural structural that I got got these out from Amy. So, I, so I, when I saw TOF, I asked the same question, but what, because of the architectural, it was pointing to the floor. It, it, it so, but there's really no criteria for how high they need to go. I, I get that because they're outside of that zone. Um, And by detaching the deck, you're essentially avoiding that issue. Which, which I, th which I think, from from a, re I would have to agree from a regulatory standpoint, I think if, if he detaches the deck, he's okay. Yeah. But, but we know that there's a documented acceleration in sea level rise, of sea level rise already documented since the early 1990s. Um, and if that acceleration is still occurring, it would be really wise while they're doing all this to just raise it a few more feet. I'm not, I don't know what the, I don't know what the cost would be, so I don't deal I don't deal with costs. But but from, from, from what I see in my work, um, I, you know, I've seen a lot more damage, and you have know, seen more storms. It would just be it would be wise. But but it's not. A, I don't think if they detach, I don't think I don't think it's a regulatory requirement that you could, or even the building inspector could latch onto or the flood insurance program. Right. And Jeff, what, didn't so say anything about the detached or detached. That was a very good question that you asked initially about the piles. Right. Well, I think that's one of the reasons we, we've gotten into this before, where we've got sort of like half the plan. Well, I shouldn't say half the plan, but we've got a good amount of the information, but not all of it. And I'm thinking about um, down at. Uh, Hawthorne, whatever the one was that we went out had a site visit and then realized we didn't really have a plan for the garage at all. There was no plan for how this garage was going to sit. It was just sort of left out of the plan, which technically if we conditioned it without that information, it sort of would have been left open. So I'm just I'm not trying to make this more difficult. I'm trying to figure out how to make sure that we've got all the information that that we should have and, and that it's clear. What's the f elevation going to be of number 20, Jeff? It's about a foot higher than 25. About a foot higher than what? Than um, the house at 18. So that's going to be at 25? Yeah. And, it, 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 and right now it's almost 25. 
So it really isn't changing. These are the houses up on as you start going up. The hill. Yep, yep. Right. No, I get it. They're not down that low area. There's no requirement. I, I I understand. So I guess the reason we're not giving that <clears throat> firm number on what height they're going to is that it's really you want to leave it up to the homeowner's discretion how high do they want to go. Um, there's no requirement for them to elevate the houses really at all. It does say on the plan minimum 20, 24. I think that was either 18 right. or you said minimum 24. I no, know. I, but I think to Jim's point, again, it's their, it's their decision at the end of the day. But having been doing this for a while and even before I served on the commission, we elevated some houses to the FEMA requirements of 20 years ago. And then they changed the the elevation requirements and these people that spend some serious money on, on these projects all of a sudden find themselves out of compliance again and facing some astronomical high insurance premiums and it's a shame I mean it seemed like at the time we were elevating these houses significantly and enough to keep them out of harm's way and they they probably still will be for a little while but but it's a real shame is that they spent 50, 70,000 bucks to elevate these houses and now they find them back themselves back in the same problem. The reason, one of the reasons they did it was to, to keep the house out of harm's way and at the same time have a reduced insurance premium. They met the FEMA standards and uh, you know, backing up even further than that to when we rebuilt houses after the blizzard of 78, we thought we were doing everybody a big favor by lifting them up a little bit or throwing something in front of them and it didn't do a thing. So I just think when you're, when you're doing these, sometimes aesthetically it's important. People don't want to face high stairs. There's all kinds of issues that come about with elevating the houses, but by the same token, um, just trying to be sure that, that you do as much to protect these things down the road as you can. Um, I mean, a consideration too, which is not a regulatory consideration, but on your line of thought, in the FEMA in the FEMA advisory literature, the one and a half foot wave has been found to, to cause pictures. structural damage to buildings, and they advise people rebuilding their houses or building new ones to build if you're in the limit of moderate wave action, which again, if it's less than 100 feet, they don't map it. We know there's a limit of water moderate wave action always landward of the V zone. Uh, so they're in their advisories, advisory literature, they're advising that in, if you're in the limit of moderate wave action to build to V-zone standards, it's up to the property owner, as, as you right. just articulated. Well, it's only going to be a matter of time before they're in the V-zone. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So we can put a condition in just recommending well, based on literature that you go to the V-zone. Elevation. Yeah, remember, house number 18 already is up on five. So yeah. The flip down there, they're already. They're already they're I get it. Even higher. Yep. I, I'm. I'm just looking at. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um. Well, as usual, I'm enlightened by Mr. O'Connell's. You know, you see, you see it as a builder. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, and it, and and it's difficult. I I appreciate it from both standpoints. I've looked at it with customers, trying to decide what to do with their houses and trying to figure out how they're going to get into their house. And um, aesthetically, it's all it's all tough. But by the same token, just trying to um, be proactive, I guess, with some of these places. You know, there's always some way to avoid having to truly deal with some of the issues, but in the long run, I'm not sure that the gain is all that great. Uh, you know, in terms of the deck, they're going to they're have to articulate it at a future point with the building inspector anyway. So right. you you suggesting to show the piles that it's not going to be structurally connected to it? Well, is, I think is, we is, have is, is important, at least, at least, you know, maybe uh, uh, add, to, add to the narrative. You right. <coughs> Yeah. Um, I think that could be a condition on the deck. 
if, no, if the house isn't elevated to bring it to full compliance as a deck would have to be not attached. And that will be reviewed by the building inspector. Yeah. So Amy, if we, I mean, we've all, we've had this, we've continued this hearing now for a couple of times. We have Jim's input essentially. He's telling us where we are with this. We can give some advice, but we have a couple of outstanding issues. We have the Board of Health for number 20, right? But but you feel that it's pretty straightforward. You've got all, your, and, and you realize if it comes in to be significantly different, you have the, you run the peril of possibly having to refile. Sure, of course. And then the second piece is to get final structurals. Um, and those are coming from Rivermore? They are, yes. So we could condition that with getting those final. Um, Good, although they have been burned recently. I wish there was a way, um, I don't know, maybe maybe we word in you no know, building permit prior to review of final structural. Yeah. Okay. We can do that. All right. Okay. So I think we probably should have separate motions. Yes, I was going to do that. I make a motion we close 18 foot row. Do have a second? All in favor? All right. Aye. I make a motion to close 20 foot row with the stipulation for health approval. We're waiting on that and the final structural. For both of them. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was just on the one, the structural. Okay. Yeah. The 18 and 20 is structural. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good. Very well. Thanks, too. Jeff, thank you. Uh -huh. um, so I request to continue 780 First Parish to December 16th. A Amy, when do we expect that report back from our review person? I think, so he just got the revised material I think like last week, so he's looking at it. I mean, I'm hoping, hoping this week. Okay. Um, the 16th, I, I think the 16th is, would be a good day. Okay. When we, when we give these out, I mean, I, I realize because it's a back and forth, but do we have some sort of deadline that we put with a peer review? Do we like say? Um, as soon as possible. Yeah. And but peer reviews are generally speaking, it's posted on our on our web page, whatever, whether it's planning board, conservation, uh, reviews are out. I don't know what it is, like three, three or four weeks. Okay. To start. All right. So do we vote that? No, we haven't voted it. You have a motion to yeah. continue it? Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. So 210 Central Ave? Yeah. Second. Thank you. Second. Um, on, uh, let me just find the. December 2nd, 2019, 625 p.m. The Town Hall Central for Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40, Mass General Laws, and Section 307700, Town Central Code Bylaws, regarding the application of Lisa Pratt to install a new sewage disposal system at location at 210 Central Ave Situate. A body of another interested parties are invited to attend. Good evening. How are you doing tonight? Uh, Bob couldn't be here. He's not feeling so well. Oh, bummer. Yeah, so I, I ran up to do this. And your name? Uh, Bill Papastratus. Okay, thanks, Bill. Yeah. Um, so this is a plan to uh, 
in place a failed septic system, a new septic system in a buried beach, coastal dune, and land subject to a coastal strong flowage. Got that? Get all those lingo. Penny? No, I don't have any questions. It's pretty straightforward. You know, if you use a new septic, get it as far away from the beach as you can. It's on the road, so. Okay. Okay. Look like the best place it could be. No problem. Amy, any uh, comments on this one? Do we have Board of Health? You've been on Board of Health approval. Okay. One comment, and then I hear you missing the D, the property D, which I need a copy of. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Which I'm sure Bob can get a copy of. Okay. But so uh, if we close, uh, any idea where you are with the Board of Health? The Board of Health, the plan has been submitted uh, when this plan was brought to, the, to this board. Uh, we're just waiting to hear. From what we understand, it's not going to be a hearing. Yet. It's just going to be real. Okay, so if we close this, the only issue would be if, if they came back with some significant denial or okay. change, you'd have to refile. Yeah. And, and the alternative would be for us to continue this to the next meeting. Yeah, we'd rather not because there's new owners that are purchasing the house and they want to try to close it. I don't have a problem with those two things. Um, anybody in the audience? Okay, I make a motion to close the two minutes that the way out, pending board of health, approval in the D. Five years of D. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, wow, we hope he's feeling better. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's really too much jerky, huh? I think he did. 236 Central Ave. Yeah. Request to continue. Yeah, I just got to open it, right? Yeah. Uh, on December 2nd, 2019, at 6.30 p.m., the Town Hall Central Conservation Commission will hold a hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40, Massachusetts General Laws, and Section 30700, Town of Citra Code of Bylaws, regarding the application of Paul Holland to rebuild a single family home on piling and replace service disposal system at, at location 236 Central Ave, situated by others and other interested parties are invited to attend. And, how, uh, how far out did they want to go? They requested a continuance to December 16th. Okay, I make a motion to continue. 236 Central Ave to December 16th at 620. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. <laughs> uh, 152 Vernon Road. On December 2nd, 6.35 p.m., the Town Hall Central Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Massachusetts General Laws and Section 30700, Town of Central Code Bylaws, regarding the application of Mary Jane Curtis to repair a septic system at a location at 152 Vernon Road, situate. About it is another interesting price and by the time. And again, they've requested a continuance to December 16th. I make a motion to continue one to Burn Road, December 16th at 620. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> um, 20 Ridge Hill Road, septic repair. So on December 2nd, 2019 at 640 p.m. the Town Hall, Central Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40 of Massachusetts General Laws in Section 307. Zero zero town central code of bylaws within the application of Sherry. Is it Chris, 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 oh, I'm not <laughs> Crisco? Crisco, I believe. Crisco to repair a septic system at a location at 20 Ridge Hill Road, situated of others in the first surprise invited to attend. Good evening. 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 Good evening
Hey, uh, my name is Brendan Quinn, I'm Creative Consulting, I present to Jared for Planning Ridge Road. Um, it's a set of repair plan, um, proposing a new uh, pump and fill the existing reaching pit, which is down the hill, and a little bit within the uh, 50 foot buffer, um, and currently a reaching pit. Which uh, replace the pump and fill that and replace it with a new 1500 gallon tank and a uh, reaching chamber system. The uh, tank is closed 65.2 feet from the uh, the wetlands there, and the uh, reaching field is closed 55 feet from the uh, wetlands. And um, we'll get to uh, raise and reconfigure the plumbing so it goes out the other side of the building out the front. And, um, that's about it. We uh, we have not received board of health approval just yet. I called earlier today, and I guess we're next on the list. They haven't reviewed it yet, um, but we're next. So I'm not sure when that should be. But the soil up there is fantastic. We're expecting it. Um, and that's that's about it for me. I don't know if you have any questions. No, I don't have any questions. Uh, no, I'm okay. Richard? No, it looked like a great improvement. Lisa? No problem. Amy? Um, thanks for presenting. Yeah, so this is clearly going to be a great improvement over what's there. It's a successful thing right there in that resource area. So I did uh, speak to the engineer about adding some, uh, a little better erosion control, uh, which we can probably condition. Yeah. It's kind of an embankment going down. Yeah. Yeah, it's great chill. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't know. On this one, maybe even condition, since I'm going to say that it might be switching hands, a um, couple of posts. Although it's pretty evident that you go down and it's all wet. Right. But, um, just so they know not to clear out the back Would it add? Mm -hmm. Or it's done. Dump or stuff dump. in there. Yeah. yeah, or dump stuff in there. Yeah, I mean, it's in, I mean, it's in fairly good condition, but it's, you know. But it's 50 foot buffer. But it's 50 foot buffer, yeah. and we wouldn't want it to go go further clear to the stream. So yeah. where would you so want to place them? Um, well, you drive in, and there's kind of a turnaround driveway or garage, right? Yeah. And okay. then there's one on, in a dam yeah. that could you go. Yeah, the flags are right up along the tree line in this back portion near where the septic is right now. So does the lawn pretty much go right to the wetland? Basically, yeah. yeah. And that kind of that stops right off the deck. That's where it starts to turn into the uh, tree line uh, right around here, which is, you know, about as far away from the septic system as you can get. But it, it is right along the tree line here, a big portion of it until about flag nine. So, if you're going to place conservation posts there, you're actually going to put them right at the edge of the wetland as opposed to when you can't put them in a 50 foot buffer because that's halfway in the house, right? Right, and because this disturbance, I mean, this house pre dates 1986, right? Right. Yeah. So, this lawn and the set, you know, the cesspool has probably been there for a pretty long time, too. Um, you know, so I, I don't think that we're looking to get back buffer. No, I'm not suggesting that. I'm just saying, bigger. but if you're going to place some wetlands. Oh, where would you want them? I don't know. We could just pick a pick two spots on, on the, along the back line. So the tree they, line. Yeah, the tree line. Yeah, right at the tree line so they don't go any further. No, I'm just... I mean, anything these yeah. folks do on this house is in jurisdiction of the commission. Yes. Basically, at least in the back of the house. The 100 foot is, there's like a tiny portion <laughs> of the corner that right. is outside the 100, but it's really the whole thing's over yeah. the 100. Yeah. Well, it's all pre-existing. We're, we're not trying to take it. There's a gas and a blowing day. But just to make sure Right, I mean, if they were to come forward with like an addition, it would be a notice of intent. Right. 
I didn't notice for sure. Although it's a pretty good sized house, I mean, in, in decent shape. I'm not, I don't know. Who knows what we have going on? So, but. Um. I guess my concern is when you put the posts there, you're basically saying to people, don't do anything beyond this point when in fact they're already in it. So someone could construe that to mean that they could work in their backyard. Yeah, we've worked with a new buyer. I don't know if this is relevant at all, but he's very aware of the wetlands there. He's, he met me outside, or on site rather, when I surveyed and did some of the first testing as well. We talked about the wetlands and, and you know some of the issues that come about with at least the septic system since that's all we're doing now. But yeah. he's definitely aware of the wetlands back then. Okay. Uh, all right, well, I, I guess a couple of simple wetlands posts somewhere right in the backyard, you know. Um, right along along the tree line? Yeah. yeah. Any any particular points? I think something fairly obvious, you know, obvious or, or doesn't have to well, <laughs> but I appreciate that and I think it should be reiterated that anything that they do there they're in the buffer and they need to come yeah. we've got kind of a, standard, and we have a special condition that I yeah. can put in there that, like at the discretion of the conservation the commission will work with folks too I mean if he's got some trees in there that are dead or something he can come to the commission and say hey you know, I got a problem here, and I'm afraid these are going to be on the house. We can issue them a minor activity. So. Or if it's insignificant in That'll nature, it could be an now. RDA. But we just want them to be aware. Right. And I think he, he might be looking to do some sort of uh, work on his actual house there. Yeah. And I think he knows that he'd have to do his kind of for that. Okay. And anything else that he's looking to do really hard yeah. on the site, that's that is major. Yeah, but if it's repairs or, or like I say, the, you know, they're trying to avoid some trees falling or something, <coughs> and the commission can work with them. Absolutely, I'll let them know. Well. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody in the audience? I'm in motion to close. Second. All in favor? All right. Good. 39 Brunswick. On December 2nd, 2019, 6.45 p.m., the Town Hall, Central Conservation Commission will hold a hearing in a Chapter 131, Section 40, Mass General Laws, and Section 30700, Town of Citroën Code of Bylaws, regarding the application of Francis Adley to elevate a dwelling at location of 39 Brunswick Street, situated about others other interested parties are invited to attend. There's some people out in the hall. That's Jeff on 115 Grove. Anybody uh, here for 39 Brunswick Street? No. Oh, you know what? what? I had written some comments to them, and, um, and I'm pretty sure that Paul was double booked with Hingham. Okay. So maybe they oh, um, didn't send us the request to continue. So I think we should just continue. To the next meeting? Yes. Okay. Because it was, they were missing some information. All right. Take a motion to continue this? Yes, he did. I'll make a motion to continue it to uh, 16th of December at 6 620. Second. All in favor? Uh, that will follow Jen up. Um, 115 Grove Street. So on December 2nd, 2019, at 6.50 p.m. in Town Hall, Central Conservation Commission will hold a wetland hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40, Massachusetts General Laws, and Section 30700, Town of Central Code of Bylaws, regarding the application of Henry Holmes to construct a new single-family dwelling, common driveway, and septic system on the location of 115 Grove Street, situated by others and other interested parties are invited to attend. Good evening. Good Thank you uh, for record again, Jeff Bassett. Um, so this is an NOI filing for a new single-family home on the Lake Lot adjacent to 115 Grove Street. This lot is an a and lot that was recently well, to be created. It's currently in front of the planning board. Um, the lot's about 41,000 square feet of upland, and um, and it, it's this lot immediately adjacent to the existing home at 115 Grove Street. 
Currently, there is an existing gravel driveway that comes in here, back to the dwelling and the garage and lawn areas. The tree line runs about right here, with this area being kind of a, a brush wooded area. The wet resource areas include a VBW and an IBW, shown in blue. Those were recently approved under the ANRAP filing. The 50 foot buffer is shown in red, and the 100 foot buffer is shown in green. So the proposed work will be to construct a new single family dwelling. Let's say the majority of the dwelling is outside of the, uh, uh, it's outside of the 100 foot buffer. The nearest portion of the house to the wetland is 7.7 feet. The common driveway will be, the driveway will be moved over, and the common driveway will come in and do a T off to the respective uh, dwellings. Um, the septic is in the front yard, entirely outside of the weapon uh, the the buffer. For stormwater, the, all of the roof runoff will go to a relatively large roof drywall system will be in the rear yard. And the runoff from the yard will be directed to this grass depression slash swale along the property line. Um, that depression will be about a foot and a half deep as far as the berm, but the output is about only about four inches above on the bottom. So essentially all the water from the site will, um, if it makes it to the property line, will puddle about four inches deep and then we'll pull it back to the wetlands. Um, thus we are eliminating the risk of any downsite flooding that we just made and pushing the water back to its wetland. Um, so we see this project um, as being in compliance with the Wetlands Protection Act as well as your local rec um, regulations in that um, there's no work within the 50 foot buffer, obviously no work within the wetlands. The majority of the house is outside of the 100 foot buffer and as far away from the wetlands as possible. The septic's outside of the 100 foot buffer and there will be a uh, 12 inch diameter mulch stop, a straw bottle along the entire downgrade of the water. Um, so we're here this evening to give you kind of an initial presentation of this project. We are, do ex uh, expect to ask for a uh, continuance. Um, we're waiting on septic approval from the Board of Health, and the stormwater is being reviewed by the planning board as part of the common plan. Penny? Well, and also that A and R hasn't yet to be accepted, so the lot that they're proposing, you know, they don't have a T for that because it doesn't exist yet. Yeah. Okay. No, I'm just waiting for the information that you you know, they're going to get us. I don't have a question tonight. Next meeting tonight. Yeah, Jen? Uh, same. It's, it is nice to see some proposed um, mature tree plantings in there. I feel like that's something we end up asking about after the fact, but it's nice to see it there up front. Nothing for now. Lisa? I don't have any questions right now. Amy, anything you want to add to this? Well, well, I think, I mean, it's got a ways to go just as far as getting back to us. Yeah. But I mean, I think that some form of this project is probably approvable, like Jeff said, under our regulations and the Weapons Protection Act. Um, I'm not sure if he said it, that it is in his own two, so there may be, like, things that we don't aren't considering that other boards will be considering um, which might impact the stormwater design and the septic system potentially. I mean, so we, we do have fill and the, and the stormwater in the 100 foot buffer, um, you know, after we see what they land on for a plan, you may want to consider some buffer planting or yeah. something like that. that um, yeah. Anybody in the audience for this one? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Anyone just state your name and address? Jane Churchill, 120 Grove Street. I'm going to look right across from it. I have concerns about this from the beginning. Okay. I don't know what I can say. I've never been to one of these. Well, what's your concern? Have you. Um, um, my concern is, if I can be honest, no the lie. gentleman who going to build this, I'm not sure how long you've lived there, but 
from the beginning, it seems what he's been doing, the cause for me has been erratic, and at times um, it just doesn't fit the feel of situate to me. So I have concerns that he's going to build, you know, sell this piece of land off, and it seems very narrow, and what's going to become of it? Because what he's done so far to me has not been aesthetically pleasing to me. So I have concerns. So just so you know, as a, as a conservation hearing, what we tried to look at is, or what we should be looking at, is the Wetlands Protection Act. We have um, storm flowage, drainage, that sort of thing in conjunction with, with other commissions or boards. Um, we don't have any say over the architectural look of the house. We, we, um, we have to make sure that they keep the site stabilized so there's no runoff or things like that. But we, we don't have any real, we look at the resource areas, we know that there's a stream and there's other pieces that go to our drinking water, so we're gonna be looking at those, making sure they have the right setbacks so they, they face the, the right um, review. But in terms of saying what someone's home should look like or, or, or whatever, we, we really don't have, um, that's not our purview. So we try to stick within what our, our requirements or our mandate should be. But um, we have looked at this already. I've walked the site with the agent um, or in back of it. There's a whole bunch of moving pieces to this. Um, I think the town's looking at all of those. Um, and, and I understand what you're saying. There's already been a fair amount of disturbance there. Um, and, and they've still got a ways to go. I mean, they're trying to carve out some property and exchange some property, so there's a lot. There's still, there's still a gentleman who's uh, selling this, Mr. Uh, Holmes, has really fed us some false stories about what to expect. Mm -hmm. I thought we can have a barn and some monstrosity behind this house. I'm shocked it was even allowed to build, but I don't think that's a jurisdiction. I'm just, I'm just concerned about what's going to go this whole package when it's going to be done. Because he's fed us a lot of false promises in the past couple of years. Well, again, we're gonna, we're, we're, we've been out to the site. We have people reviewing different aspects of it and but as far as um, what he can actually build there in terms of a structure that will rest more with the building department um, dividing the lot is with the planning board so it sounds like they still have a, a fair number of things to do um, I would assume there'll be some sort of hearing for their um, are they doing an A&R or the, yeah. the storm water A&R and it's a Administrative site plan review. When is that here, Jeff? Um, I don't have that date with me. That's something you may want to check in with the check in with the planning board and find out when their hearings are. The other thing that you may want to do is is when we excuse me. So when we can. When, when we're done, we're going to continue this meeting to another date. So you want to make sure you take note of that because you're not going to get another notice in the mail um, when we have another hearing on this. But what you may also want to do is check in with Jen a day or two prior to the meeting to be sure that they haven't asked to continue it again. I mean, you don't want to come here on a night like tonight and, and find out that they've requested a continuance. And, so it's up to you sort of to dog this a little bit in terms of following the, the meetings. Um, but, but we'll continue it to another date. And then um, I'd just be following up with, with uh, Jen in the office and just be sure that that's happening. So, all right. Yes, sir. Uh, Jared, CSEO of uh, 125 Hill Street, so just down the hill. So my, my main concern was just um, not necessarily aesthetics or anything like that, but the, the runoff, so I know about the trees. Yeah, the storm water. Yeah. Um, 
so I know obviously the, the, the roof will get drained to us when we're doing the driveway. I guess so a lot of trees need to come down obviously to build the house and the, the driveway, you know, where that is in the shed. Uh, I do live downhill on the property, so I'm right next door. It's already kind of a, a low wet spot. So I'm just concerned that additional water, I know they're building up a swale or a burn or there's something there to uh, Right. Have you seen this plan? Yeah. So you've seen the, the what they're creating on the right hand side. Yep. And and we'll have that reviewed by by someone to be sure that. Right. Know, so I'm sure the calculations are right. You know. Well, here. we'll have it reviewed as well. Yep. Jeff's not bad, but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. I mean, it's it's really just because the water is going to come down hill. So sure. It's a legitimate concern. And you have good concern. I mean, it's a tight site. I'm not sure what the soil conditions are. And how it, I know, just know that my property in that area does not drain. Yeah. It stays very sunny. So if we're going to have a pond sitting there, then it's just going to continue coming to my backyard. What's the depth of that, Jeff? How much water would that actually hold? So it's a, it's a berm swale combination that is about a foot and a half deep, but the spillway at the end of it is only about four inches above the bottom elevation. So most of that burn is to control when you have a real 100 year storm. Um, the natural flow of water is kind of a gentle slope towards the back right Do you want to property. Do you want to sit over here or maybe you've already? I kind of do Okay. <laughs> so yeah, so the general flow is back this direction towards Jared's property. Jared's house probably sits around this vicinity. So the idea is to put a berm in here to direct the water back to the to the So my, mine's sort of like a panhandle that kind of borders his property. Sure. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's, it's right where I have to go his play area. So the, the spillway uh, sort of goes right into that play area. So I don't know if it can be redirected or uh, I know it can't go up there, obviously. Grab my Right. Um, so it looks like their spillway, they're stopping it at the 50 foot buffer essentially. So our can't go beyond that. condition is that people shouldn't go beyond that. Um, well, and just just a small uh, comment is it's going to be debatable whether or not a grassy swale is allowed in this area. I mean, I think that that may be a comment from the water review engineer because you know whether or not it meets the requirements especially in the zone too so as i said like this is probably not necessarily what's going to be approved this version one so option to like i guess possible to increase the size of the stormwater runoff and add a drain to the drive because i think the drive running off adding that asphalt to the driveway Increasing the size of the driveway to increase the runoff is there potential to increase the size? Because I just don't. I don't want the well, storm well, the water, water as well too. The, the storm water <coughs> is, uh, in, in this case is planning board. So those comments you should bring up at the planning board hearing, mm -hmm. and um, the review engineer who probably won't be at that hearing, but still will get the comments and, and maybe. Marshall will have time to think about a response to that even after tonight's comment. You know, maybe there is a way they can infiltrate on property to the left and have less impact rather than putting the soil there. I mean, so, so there, there could be other versions of this plan. Um, I, I'm not sure. That's something we can look at. Yeah. So, Jeff, I think just to add to it, for the work that's between the 50 and 100, there's still a fair amount of um, building and driveway and whatnot in that area. Yeah. And it looks like the mitigation you're proposing for that is the planting of six trees. Okay. Yeah, I mean, those really weren't intended for, for mitigation. It's more screening between the two properties. Okay. But, um, I think I think that would be a good idea or depending on what you ultimately work out for a swale or whatever but that could if that could be vegetated 
in a way that's a little more natural or something. Because I know you have a, a grass area, but if that could also have plantings or or something that could be a more natural. Yeah. Um, I think if we put maybe evergreens closer to the property line in that area, we split the property as an alpha for privacy. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to put plantings too close to the house itself. Right. Well, I mean, it looks like you're, you're uh, it's all pretty tight. The edge of that house is almost into that. Um, yeah. yeah, I would think maybe along the ground, though, this area. I guess I'm thinking even plantings within that swale, you know, stuff that would, would like a rain garden kind of a, no, a approach or, or whatever. Give some thought to how that could be vegetated a little bit better. Um, it's just pretty aggressive clearing all in that area um, in the 100, that's for sure. And there's actually build out in that area, so. All right. Okay, I can look into that. So, so I think you should go to the first meeting in January. The first or the 22nd? When do you need The 6th is the first meeting, and the second one's a Wednesday, isn't it? Second meeting in January is a Wednesday. Yeah. 22nd. It's the 22nd. It might be better. Can we go to the first one in January? wonder if you haven't met with planning. Yeah, planning we is pretty backed up. I'm just wondering if you're going to have gotten well, um, I don't care. That's we'll fine. Put it on the 6th. No. Yeah. Okay. And then move it. Yeah, we'll have, probably have to move it if you want. It's going to go on it. Okay. So, so I make a motion. Yep, I make a motion to continue 115 Road Street to 620 on January 6th. 2020. Yeah, 2020. Oh. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Okay. And you got the same spiel you, in terms of following the meetings and stuff yep. like that. No, understand. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Orenberger, Mr. Bauer, been waiting here. Uh, Hello. Good evening. Bill, Bill Marmer with Dave Buckley. From Buckley, Road. sorry. Yeah, I'll exactly. get it. I will, um, too many bees. Too many, too many I'm bees. sorry about that. Okay. This okay. is being taken up okay. under our agent's report. So everybody got the photos. No offense. Memo. Read it today. Okay. These are the photos. Got those two. So we're, we're going right into enforcement discussion. Do you want to uh, give us your thoughts on the same email? Well, I actually, uh, Karen and I met with Dave Buckley this afternoon, actually, um, about how we can get this done. And I think he brought up the fact that the roads are not being maintained and that the roads are not being maintained issues um, relative to the rain events that have happened in the last couple of weeks, um, specifically the uh, month of November rain that we had um, and the storm water that left the site uh, was not properly managed in accordance with the plan. So um, it was up on or about the 22nd, the Friday and the weekend around that time, there were a couple of instances which resulted in the silt that you guys all saw in those pictures. Yeah. Um, on both Tilden and Hatherley and down six. And, uh, and actually Dave um, was able to walk us through the events on the site and, and what led up to that and, and what they have done in the meantime to, to try to get it back under control and remedy <coughs> the situation. So I was gonna turn it over to Dave. Sure, uh, uh, good evening. Uh, can I walk you through as I Amy and Karen only this afternoon. Um, we had a couple areas <coughs> issues for uh, duration of the storm on Friday. <coughs> First of which, let's um, go over to Tilden Tilden Road. If um, I don't know if we have the same photos here, maybe maybe that's need to show photos. You don't mind if I can. I've got it right here. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. So this is that way. Labeled. Got it right here. Yeah. So on. Tilden Road, where a lot of 
every issue we had is really good to make the goal of where we're getting the force and trying to now finish a lot of these entryways in these critical areas. First, on the Golden Road, a while back we set up all of our original road control measures and had a small strip of land that was mostly left from what was originally there, the muck and the weeds, along the edge of the sidewalk down to the road. Uh, we have now, obviously, if you've driven by the site recently, we have been working diligently to get entry features completed, basins completed, rough grading down the site, along the irrigation, the whole nine yards. We, we reached the point where we know we have to finish, finish the last stretch. So we were, in this portion of the road, uh, or, or the site, we were engaged in the last little bit of getting the area loaned, uh, uh, a little bit bigger of a swale established to direct stormwater flow, which is per design down this direction. And we, my landscapers replaced the silk fence, and unfortunately there was a couple areas which wasn't done well. Um, I can show you, you know, there's no, there's no denying it, they, they made a mistake. This is all the brand new loam that had been spread in preparation of loam, and just a little bit of silt got out for these key points here. They were prepping for the new loam, so they pulled back the silt fence to blend this into the existing sidewalk. Yeah. And thus, we had the issue in Tilden Road. Now, since then, the work is done. Tilden Road today looks like this. Was this during the rain today? This is this morning. This morning. This is this morning. Yep. It's been raining all morning. I was okay. I was out I was out in the rain taking these <laughs> these photos. So we have since sawed of that whole area. It is completed. We even sawed of the strip of land that's between the road sidewalk and the town road itself to help provide a little additional stabilization. Uh, unfortunately, it, it, it's not an excuse. It, it's just the explanation of what happened on the evening. Um, but this area, I think so. That whole entryway is all sawed on both sides of the street, which. Just to you know, get to an update at the end, we do uh, at the end of these. This rough replicates all the area we have sawed it. So those areas are now all 100% permanently stabilized with sod um, on its open road. There, the only small stretch that is not sawed is a small stretch along the entryway here, which we have completed the sidewalk from this intersection to here. And over the course of the next week, we are finalizing the sidewalk from this point into Tilden Road and there's a little grass strip that will be sawed at that, that point. So that whole area will be 100% stabilized as well uh, shortcoming. So, so that was a first issue. So now, you know, on, on that note, that's a, not an excuse. We, 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 we had guys driving around the site. They, they noticed the issue shortly after the rain event started happening. We were aware of it. Landscape crews had all left for the day. We had called them back up. I got a call from Wesley and Whitney, who was on site that day. So there's a lot of eyeballs on the site. Um, it's just there was a there was a period of a few hours where the guys weren't there. They got back there. We got mobilized again, and they, they got the area buffed up before the rain continued any further. Um, Hadley Road, uh, sort of a similar similar but a little different issue. Uh, let's get working towards getting these areas completed and stabilized. Um, a few things that have happened on that, up, up, up on that site there, which these weren't contributing factors, but just to give you a brief update there. We have installed brand new upright granite curbing along Hadley Road. Um, for the goals to be able to grow aesthetics, a lot of other advantages there. And we have this whole main entry road is all paved all the way up through. Everything, everything in yellow here is all paved. <coughs> We are having a diligent <coughs> work on this whole entryway feature if you've driven by the site recently. This whole side of the site is long awaiting the irrigation head installation. Uh, over the, hopefully any, any day now we'll be getting we'll stop raining any day now we'll start irrigation head installation. This side is all rough grading and we're doing the landscaping the back of the model homes. There was a small section uphill of the Poor little word in my business. There was a small section. There was a small section of curbing where uh, one of the landscape crews had driven over the cobblestones to get into the backyard. That deluge range was just enough of a little puncture point for a tiny little area of watershed to actually bleed out into that main <coughs> area, Which the way the stormwater design is set up, the 
there's a can there are catch basins that capture water from the site and direct them into our pump system. I don't know if you're aware of how we're managing stormwater collectively in the site, but we are aiming, working to collect the bulk of all of our stormwater at certain key collection points and then pump them with large diesel powered pumps up into our basins as temporary sediment sumps. And that's what we've been managing the site for well over a year now and it's been very successful. Uh, there is, of course, the, there's a couple tiny bit of areas where that's not possible and that is the last few stretches of some of these entry roads because there is last detention basin which catches stormwater. In some instances, like the Pat Hadley in the side is thereabouts 100 feet into the site. That's per design. Uh, this entry road drains by design right into Hadley Road and then goes down Hadley Road by design. Um, unfortunately, the break point where my landscape was broke through cobbled was just after the last basin that allowed a little bit of sediment to get into the entry road and the deluge of water went down Hadley Road and was able to get down the area. Once again, my guys were able to, my site guys, once it started happening during the middle of the rain event, we were able to get out there. We have a temporary pipe that we had installed and we were able to weed cut the swale in there and the skid steer you know, interrupted that natural flow that we had, redirect the flow into the basin which gets into our collection point and pump back and feel like you know the release had happened until they got the machine mobilized up there and moved it. And we've since prepared that cobblestone edge and we it up that edge and added additional erosion. Not an excuse, but that, that's what happened, that, that small little thing that led to that instance. Now our plan, of course, over the next the coming weeks, pending full letter word, holding off longer and not getting too wet, is we, much like the Tilden side, for aesthetic reasons, for stabilization reasons, our full intention is to saw these entryways as well, to get instant stabilization if we get the season. And right now I've, I've got long spread, really, this section of the site here, our goal is along that is to sod this. It's already long, it's going to get irrigation and hit and sod. And we're now bulk completed with masonry. It's taken quite a while, and it's driven by the site. I've had half a dozen masons and chipping pieces of grant for three months now. Uh, that work is mostly completed. Uh, as soon as it dries up, we're going to along this side and it gets on with irrigation and, and hopefully be able to saw it all the way from Hadley right up to the back of all the homes which is our goal in this entire square. So instant stabilization using saw. If for whatever reason we run out of season and it freezes up on us, we'll end up spraying that whole area with tack of fire and, 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 and hydro pulp and temporarily stabilize it until the saw finally open up again in April. But we're heavily pushing for a number of marketing reasons that we get it done and it's, it's done, it's instant, it's saw. Um, so that's what we're working towards right now on those entry ways as well. On six, Really, and even from the photos I was looking at, and we were even looking at this area, extremely <coughs> The only thing we, we saw in six that looked like it may have contributed a little bit to, and it's if you may be used to seeing this, is there was a bit of a track. This is down Sixth Avenue, just past our um, our lot here. So we have a tracking pad. We have stabilization measures that are all in place on lot 150. We have a tracking pad where to access the site. It, it, best we can figure from the looking at the site on that day is it was a little bit of bleak, that tracking pad had a little bit of mud in it. It was just it was so heavy on that day it was just bleeding out a little bit of I can have the tracking stone. So we've since put new tracking stone back in there. Um, that was more the marginal I mean, more of the heavy stuff was definitely on corn tilgan and down off this entry right here. So so th those are the three areas I mean we've taken obviously measures to fix those areas, button them up since then. Um, We've got a game plan moving forward to really get these areas wrapped up and fully stabilized using saw. I mean, that, that's at the point where we're at now. We're not seeing things obviously go beyond true seeding time of the year or any of this stuff. Um, I know Amy had asked that I give just an extremely quick synopsis of where we're at on the whole site. Is it five minutes? Well, I'll try to, I'll try to keep it on six seconds. This whole thing was <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll keep it. I'll keep it extremely brief, just to kind of give you a sense. Just since we have been here for a while, for those of you that may not have been on site and don't drive by this neck of the woods often, um, this whole site plan, everything in yellow represents roadways that are 100% complete, barring 
some sidewalks and culvert work that's ongoing right now. But the infrastructure, you know, road, uh, you know, drainage, gas, water, sewer, electric lines, that is all complete. Roadway is a binder course, and we've been driving on it for, for actually quite a while now. Everything in orange is part of phase two. That is uh, ongoing right now. The bulk of the utilities in those areas are actually complete as we speak. Um, they are working on putting the gravel base down, and hopefully we'll be granting for paving that area before we lose the season right now. So everything in orange is our goal before the plants completely close after the year to actually have paved and, um, and stabilized. Now there'll be, of course, an additional work going on for the padding for lots to bring a much appropriate rate in preparation of home um, construction. Um, all the pink you see are actually homes that are, are actively being constructed as we speak. Uh, we have other units beyond this that are sold that we just, uh, that are in various stages of plans being ordered, uh, permitting, and, um, and so on and so forth. But we just simply haven't gotten to start breaking ground on this yet as well. But everything in pink is actively under construction. These five units out here are very well along. Actually, these five, 15 I should say, sorry, and these four are very far along in the process. We hope to have this building pack and the first residents move in there about the end of January. Is our goal for the very first occupants in the community, so we're excited for that major milestone coming up soon enough. Um, with really the anticipation of at least one to two full building packs to have fairly consistently there are now for the duration and completion of the project. Um, so we have a, a, a lot of happening over this next calendar year. Um, you know, once again, our goal is uh, to get as much stabilized before this winter as we can. Once the season starts breaking in, we are spec to the community on these units themselves. It's the front yards. We're sodding all the front yards of these units as well. Uh, that you know, provides instant side of gratification for the homeowners, but it, it helps to provide a little extra instant stabilization on the front edge of the properties too. So um, you know, it, it sort of serves two purposes in, down the side of the end units a little bit. The backyards and these major other areas will be seeded, and many of which have actually already been seeded uh, numerous times right now during different stabilization and action measures that we've done. Uh, the whole backyard of this whole area across the street, that's all got grass on it. That's you know, there about three, four inches tall right now. You now, of course, a good amount of it may be disturbed when we go to start building these, but it's a, a stabilization measure we've done to, to get certain sections stabilized in the interim. Um, portions up in this area here, backyards, um, you know, soil water basins, as I, I believe you may have been kept before my gaming, before going to phase two, this basin, this one, this one, this one, and this one are all constructed and are actively receiving water to various different degrees. Um, some of which are, are temporarily receiving water as sediment stumps. Some of which we're not receiving water to avoid contaminating the sediment during construction. Uh, the only basin that's not complete, or not been started yet, is the one way back here. We've cleared these trees, but haven't broken ground or, or, or taken the stumps out of the section of the land yet just to really focus our efforts on what we thought and we were hoping we could bite off and get far along before the winter closes out on us, which we're pushing across our fingers still on track to do right now. Um, so circling back to yes. the um, SWIP stuff, um, what your yes. plan is so, to so, so a, a few, a few, few different, few different things, and um, some of it as it relates to BMPs, and some of it just relates to other practices as we talked about today, which unrelated to necessarily pure sediment release. One of the measures that we're going to be doing, uh, which is more, I think, more of a planning um, issue, but it still relates to, to stormwater during the trucking phase. So right now we have a lot of trucks coming out of the site for for fill uh, for phase two for the lots for the roadways, bringing a lot of it and they're going to be doing so for the next month or two, solidly, and even into the spring a bit. Um, you know, there's been some issues whereby you know, large trucks drive on the unstabilized dirt, the truck tires being big and knobby, a lot of sediment. It's been tracking down on this road, and we've been having the issue when it gets dry, you know, the dust, and or sometimes it's been tracking down on the total road. Um, you know, we've been managing that every day. Every day has been, sweet, been street stripping happening every single day, sometimes multiple times a day, but what we're going to be doing for the next month or two during the heavy trucking periods when we have that is we're going to be having a sweet sweeper on site date 
for uh, all day for an eight hour portion, just constantly sweeping the site to, to really help the level of sweeping to manage more of the road, roadway sort of stuff um, during the site. And, and I know that's really not necessarily directly uh, erosion control management, but sort of best practices that we're trying to help that level right now. Um, you know, regarding stormwater, a couple of different stormwater things that we're working on right now. Uh, this area is all been seeded and been planted where um, there's some stabilization that we're looking to come back in there and bolster the size of that temporary berm over the course of the next few weeks, leading into the winter time periods, cleaning out some of the sediment that it built in that. There's a swale that carries water currently all around the site to here now, and then it goes on the road into this point and it's pumped up to here. Um, permanent design, it'll end up going into a, this collected woods area and then this will bleed out naturally into, into Hadley in permanent design format when there's no silt in it. Um, but we have temporarily controlled it to go this fashion for right now. But we're working on getting that uh, further bolstered up. Uh, so like I said, going back to uh, stabilization areas. So this whole front entry is all, as I mentioned at the onset of the conversation, it's all stabilized. It's, it's 100 percent stabilized and saw it. Um, uh, it will be it's 99 percent stabilized because of this one stretch at each side mark, and that will be done over the next week. This side the portion that's not stabilized has got it's uh, mulch socky and silt fence installed to stabilize that exposed dirt. Um, along Hadley Road, uh, we're working towards, like I said, getting the area fully stabilized inside. In the meantime, we'll install the silt fence. We're actually going to do this week installing additional silt sock down that roadway where it begins to back the brand new curb and then just went in place as an additional measure um, because the silt fence tends to be a constant maintenance thing with the wind. Silt sock tends to hold up a little bit better, doesn't blow. Um, and um, pumping on a couple of the catch basins at the end of the street when we talked about this afternoon to make sure that going into the winter that there's no sediment issues of controlling the sediment. Because right now, as I said, the whole strategy of the stormwater on the site is to keep the water on the site. It, 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 it's, you know, it sounds good in theory. A lot of the BMPs that we put in place, the silt sock, the silt fence, they, they, they're decent at controlling water, but they don't really filter mass of water when it gets to it, um, contrary to popular belief. We use those to direct the water to these key collection points, which we then pump them up to larger basins. That allows the sediment to slowly settle out of them, and which will either leach into the ground or it gets treated and can slowly release to clean over time. Um, do you want mine? No, I walk off the oh, I know. floor. I'm like, <laughs> Hot. Hot. So I think Hot. that's Hot. the problem. <laughs> the, 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 the. Okay. And then probably, well, the full day street sweeper, that's part of the MPs. Correct, yeah. We have backing up the catch basins. Um, yep. Maybe adding erosion controls around some of the stockpile. They're just going to. Yeah, we're, we're going to take a look at some of those. Yeah, yeah. I, I, thank you. I, I, we're going to take a look at some of the ones. Is see if there's any of them that are contributing to, to the key sensitive locations and there we'll add additional measures around those. You know, we've been, during the construction process, we were, we were managing those piles via spraying with tack of fire and seed, and you may have noted it, if you maybe noted there was a giant pile along that was weeds yeah. this tall out of it, and um, a portion of that still is weeds this tall, although they're brown and dead now, but we've been cutting into that pile and actually screening it for screen loam. So we'll take a look at any of the existing piles if there are other measures need to be put in place as we discussed as well. That, that and then at which point are uh, the drainage lines we have discussed like cleaning those out? I mean, I guess one of our concerns um, for sure is that the sediment in the pipes would hit the um, natural resources. Sure, sure. So, so I, I think there's there's a few different things we, we, we actually have done prior, if I recall, and, and we certainly can choose if there's an appropriate time, I, and, and I, I'm digging in my memory if we end up actually, I think what we've done in the past, I, I think Cameron, um, I think is what we did. Yeah, I, think, yeah, so we I think that's what we did like year prior, year. but yeah. here we cambered them, we, we, they, everything seemed clean at the time when we cambered them. And, we're going way back in that memory. I apologize for speaking. Um, you know, I, regardless, I think it's appropriate that either we, we find a time 
in the spring or definitely even at the completion of the project whereby we're assessing multiple points for, for cleanliness, of course, in the system. I, 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 we sort of assume that would be a, a, a practice of, as we defer the process to make sure everything is clean and everything is uh, cleaned out. Not only, we'd be doing that on our on-site stuff, but they, you know, for these key years along uh, Adelaide 6 as well, yes. Right, and then, I think lastly, we just want to touch on just really quickly, unrelated to that issue was, are we, you know, like to talk about sure. this, changes on Hatterley on in the design. Yeah, what can, I, can we, before we get into that one, can okay. we? Okay, just go through Can comments. we deal, yeah, yeah, if yeah, you don't mind. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Um, Penny, do you have any? I just, well, this is a few times I know, and I, when I've driven by, especially in Hatterley Road, I have seen where the silk socks, they've been obscured something. And almost every day, somebody should just run the line and make sure that they're in their proper alignment yeah. so nothing is getting out of like overnight and a pretty strong something. But I've seen seen that and I've seen seen it be broken and it's just, you know, it's unfortunate because then the next thing you know you got yeah. Going the road yeah. I mean, we, the few that you'll see us do, and we 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 have a lot of eyeballs. Yeah. Okay. Definitely a lot of eyeballs around. Not only ourselves, our consultants, town consultants, on, on, on a lot of portions of the project. Uh, mainly focused on a lot of stormwater. We have sections that are, we actually. It may look a little weird. But within the entryway, we will put these little sections of of the mold sock almost in the road. And that is purposely designed that any water that comes down the entryway, yeah. theoretically, will have silt in it. Yeah. Even if we sweep the streets, yeah, it's there's this fine yeah. film that stays there until it just is there. Yeah. Um, it, it's in there, and it, we place them to actually prevent the water from jumping over in a storm in a high flow of water over the catch uh, basin rate. And, and so it hits the backing of, of that mold sock and it goes into the system. Um, so we do a lot of those things leading up to a storm. Um, yeah, you you just now. want to make sure that it's, it's all lined up. Yeah. <coughs> you know, I've no, noticed it down by the catch, catch basin before you get to the end. Yeah. A couple of times across from six. Okay. Jen? Um, a couple things. Um, I recognize that you probably feel like you see the street sweeping truck several times, but as somebody who drives on Tilden regularly, it's far more dirtier than it is clean. So well, that was that was one thing that was discussed today. It is. Um, so the current program, so the original program of what we were doing with the street sweeper was, it was, it, it, SLT is the name of the site contract that, that's doing the, the bulk of the site work. They own the street sweeper. It's been parked on the site for well over a year now. Their protocol has been for a long time that at the end of the day, the last two hours of the day, they would come through and renew sweep the entire site, including off-site roads at the end of the day. Um, that, um, when we started breaking into phase two, we were in discussion, this is probably going back about a month and a half ago now, give or take. We were noting that there was an excessive amount of stuff coming down this one stretch of the road. So we had them bolster that up to twice a day in the morning and the afternoon. Um, about a week and a half, two weeks ago, their their own operating machinery, as machines tend to do, had mechanical issues, which still have mechanical issues. So they have since been, in the last week or two, week and a half to Two weeks from now, and then subcontracting it to an outside street sweeping company who has been coming. The structure is when you, when you go to an outside company, they, they charge you for a four hour minimum and they've been coming at the end of the day for a four hour stretch. Well, that's a four hour stretch at the end of the day. So, what we just literally just told them today, and we I relate to Karen, who's uh, been meeting this morning, was that we're going to have them come for a full eight hour day during the major fill operations. And so they would be, you know, I'm deferring to my site contracts to what those hours are. I just throw a 9 to 5, maybe it's 8 to 
or whatever they block that makes the most sense to you know eat it first thing as the roads start off clean. So um, they're going to mainly focus on this stretch right in here because this is really what gets the biggest yeah. mess by by a long shot. Don't get me wrong; other areas do get messed up over the course of due the course of a day because you know get pickup trucks and drive and what they get some like here. These are contributing little to none to any of the issues we've ever had on the site, but nonetheless, the main focus is going to be here, and with the exception of, as I joke around, lunch breaks and bathroom breaks, for that eight hour pay, they'll be just focusing mainly on constantly driving, constantly sweeping, and that was um, what we're going to have to focus on. But to really, that, that should see a huge difference in this main stretch right there, um, doing that protocol, we're going to um, kick in place with, with that outside of Sure. Um, the second thing was there was a note about parking on Tilden despite the no parking sign. And I feel like, do, do, do you want to chime in? Oh, okay. Uh, I'm joking. Um, it, I, and from the way I see it, it looks like it's a, a sign on behalf of you telling somebody else to not park there mm -hmm. as opposed to nobody parking. So if maybe it was like a that, town of that, situate that was, signs? That was, well, it was, I, I told brothers purchased those signs and installed them. Uh, they are not um, town of situate signs. They're not legally enforceable, I don't think, by the police department. I, 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 I'm not opposed to the town placing legal no parking signs there. It's just, I, a, as a private property owner, we can't put legal enforceable street signs up. So yes, okay. they, were, they were done by us, by toll at our expense. Uh, it was requested and discussed with multiple parties in the town, including even the police department, to do such. Um, I don't know if they're, that, that's a legal question that's beyond my expertise on enforceability. Okay. And maybe you can speak to I'm just that. saying that's how I yeah. saw it. Yeah. Was that it wasn't, I would still think somebody affiliated with your site could park there based on the way it looks. Um, Not, Based on the way, well, I'm not a legal. There is nothing illegal about parking that I'm aware of, at least from a, from a legal town ordinance police standpoint. Um, it's a, a special permit aspect, which is why we put them up there to help control and mitigate. And it, it has made a significant difference on the site. I mean, we were having early onwards in the project, and maybe I don't know if you were at, 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 in the loop, like Karen would speak better. I mean, it was a Particularly, Hadley Road was the main area of focus. There was a, a lot of activity of people parking here, and a lot of the, a lot of our vendors and a lot of the companies that work for us have, they now know the gist and have gotten the hint. There's always the occasional outside trucking company. The first time someone's ever been to the job site, first time this UPS driver, delivery driver, somebody who's brand new that will get lost and will, you know, they'll they'll come out there and they'll see a giant sign that says Seaside is situated, and they'll have their paperwork that says. Seaside situate and they'll pull over here and go, where am I going? And, and where every one of my staff members, including all the folks who work on site, are well in tune to keep that up. Personally, I have a constr my construction office is right here. I run out the doors, you know, waving my hands and you know, kick people on the job site more times than I can count over the last year. So it's a, a constant management thing. It's we're constantly just managing the, the, the traffic flow on the site with vendors and we're we're always getting the word out to new folks, so um, it, it's just an ongoing thing. I mean, really, at the end of the day, it's just ongoing management with, with the different folks that come to the site. Um, I think the, the no parking signs help. It's just they're not. Yeah, and they're, they're not, you're right. They're 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 purposely designed not to be real known parking signs because mm -hmm. they're not real known parking signs. Right. It just seems misleading. Um, I, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't right, think so it's just a it. side note, yeah. so I distributed the notes from our consultant, which has all comments related to permit broader than our but, permit. But I, I guess, you know, yeah. Just so you get a gist of, of what's going on. But so I appreciate your, that comment, but that's not oh. related to the orders, the, the market. Okay. But yeah, so but that is a good observation just to let them know for sure. Yeah. Richard, she stole them all. I'm sorry. I don't have anything to add. Sorry, Richard. That's all right. 
Yeah, I don't have anything to say either. <laughs> <laughs> they pretty much covered it. Um, if I don't, if I can jump in for a minute here. So, how much silt do you think came off the site, and how much damage? Do, can we quantify that at all? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm just seeing it running. As far as well, I mean, I, I, I don't have a quantifiable. I mean, I can speak to probably duration. Mm -hmm. um, it, it wasn't a long duration in the sense that you know, we had the rainfall event. You know, the, I want to say I got it. I'm just going from my memory, of course. I want to say the rain probably happened around 3:30 in the afternoon. Thereabouts, 4:30. I had Brian calling me and my own team calling me that the rain had started. They noticed an issue, and probably two hours of duration, we had teams mobilized and were on site fixing different points and, and plugging stuff up. So I'd say it was, you know, it, it you know, definitely happened. Obviously, because you know, we know it happened. It, it, I would say. It, is there any places that it? Hours. Is there any places that we noticed that it? Has done any damage that it needs to be cleaned up? I mean, you mentioned having the pipes checked for any leftover sediment. Um, you know, the big concern obviously is if it heads towards the public uh, water. ocean, the discharge from a lot of that street drainage goes directly to the ocean. On the other side, any runoff or whatnot winds up in heading towards the Satuit Brook. So. So those are the two areas. I mean, if it runs back onto your property or goes yeah. into an area, you guys can fix it. Sure. But if it's coming off site, where's it going and, and has it created any damage that needs to be cleaned up or rectified? Well, I, I, I mean, this is not based on like scientific data that I have in hand. But I mean, the, the rain events were significant enough in volume, meaning they were inch plus rain events. So there was a lot of fluid, and I, I mean, that we have not observed any direct impact, but I think that the sediment was significantly okay. diluted, so, yeah. and moving at a pretty good rate. So, I mean, I suppose we could look into that. Um, I mean, I, I, at the end of the day, there's a violation, and we're concerned about it, but the reason we're concerned about it is because we want to know what kind of damage it does. Right. So, I, I think that's something that we want to just look around. Maybe have boards they wouldn't take a look and say, do we have any buildup of sediment anywhere well, off-site? I'd be willing to offer if it, if it works out, and I know we have um, dealt with the board and myself, but uh, I'd have to reach out to them and see what their schedule would like to get out. Maybe, maybe within the next week, but I can contact LEC and have them come out and, and take a quick peek around. I don't know what their schedule is like, and just do an inspection and um, submit a report for you and their observations. Yeah, may, maybe do it in conjunction with what's the way, you know. Yeah, get them to do maybe it. I'll just try to have them reach out and maybe get out there and then we maybe and then we go the next week and just take a peek around. Um, on, in looking at some of these pictures, the basins, I know in a lot of cases we look to have these basins covered with some sort of fabric. It doesn't look like there's any fabric on any of these. And that can go both ways. The problem is once you put fabric on it and then it silts up, then it can't drain and then it just carries further. Um, yeah, I mean, but, most, but most places when, when we, part of the orders are that these basins get protected. So I'm just wondering the what... The issue with the silt sacks is even, even in the absence of any silt in the, in the water, especially in a public way, we run into this issue on our sites all the time, is that the very nature of a silt sack is designed to slowly release water through it filter out any sediment that's in the water. Even completely 100% clean water doesn't go through them fast. So on a roading condition, it ends up creating dangerous puddling conditions on public thoroughfares. And, and that's that's one of our biggest concerns that we would have on those as much as, it's sort of a double-edged sword. As much as it does prevent the sediment from going there, it actually prevents a lot of the water from going through there. So that that's, um, it's always a catch-22 with those because then we get issues with we're flooding out neighbors' homes, and we actually right. ran into that. We actually ran into that issue early on when we were trying to we were, we were going to the back and forth what we do to mitigate all the situations about a year ago on the top of Sixth Avenue, and, and that actually ended up leading to flooding into these back people's backyards because none of the water went into the catch basin and mm -hmm. into the silt sacks. Right. Um, you know, I, I defer. I defer 
so you would we you should do it just in this so is that is that hard it would seem to me that most of the, the issues that happen here and when it happened in the spring is at some point there's some urgency to get a bunch of stuff done in, in a hurry. You know, if you're closing in, the weather's closing in, you want to get these things done. I, I happen to be going by when they were sodding, you know, you got a mess of guys working there. And and obviously the objective in getting the sod down is to have it look good but at the same time stabilize the site. Well, the so it, it works yeah. both ways. Yeah. But you know that's all the more time so that you want to have people there it, whether it's your supervisor or SLTs that's dealing with the erosion control or whatever that are on top of these things because on any job site that's typically when there's a problem um, you know it's either people just a real lackadaisical which I don't think that's the case I think it's more a case of everybody's trying to get this thing done and there's a real urgency to push this along but somebody's not watching um, out for the few pieces that that need to be kept up on and and that's you guys or you giving it off to your subs or whatever like that but um, <coughs> that to me always seems to be sort of the weak link in in some of these things like you say it's the landscape or didn't put some of the erosion control back or something else but they're a landscape so it's really not at the end of the day it's your problem. Yeah. Well, yes. It's so, definitely all, always. Um, the, we, we understand. the construction yeah. entrance areas is probably yeah. something that you want to take a look at and maybe renew those more frequently, especially when it's real muddy. You know, to your point, every all the trucks are dragging mud in and out. You put down that wrap or whatever yeah. to clean it up, but after a while, it just gets laden with mud, mm -hmm. and then as it's pretty ineffective and so probably keeping up those construction entrances on a more regular basis is is, is yeah, definitely important on one, lot one, on one point here without, without yeah and and, and, and and maybe up on the site you know you're up in in the site in a couple areas yeah yeah exactly yes you got haul you trucks have, moving in different areas and i forgot to mention that yeah we I, talked I, about I, that, yeah, that was, I, I did yeah. admit that i apologize so yeah there is a Apologize for that. Sorry. There is a tracking pad we do have that is up in this area, so that while they're not, they're bringing the fill in off the side of the roads. So and that is once again something that has to get, a, get better maintained. It's there, but it, it's yeah. to your point. So then the street the sweeper the other morning, you know, just, you're talking about the parking. They were unloading sod, and it was early. It was like quarter of seven, seven o'clock, and and they're unloading sod on on Tilden Road, and the guy's out there with a the street sweeper, but he's using water. To clear and it's freezing, and a couple of cars are coming around the corner, <laughs> and the cops out there trying to do one of these, and the cars are going sideways. So, um, it's there's a catch twenty two to all this sort of stuff, you know. Um, so there's a safety issue that that runs with that. Common sense. You know, and it's going to get colder, and it's just it's just it's like BP going like five points. It's just the right time. I thought time. you were going to tell me someone actually got hit. No, no, no. But <laughs> I was like bracing for when it. When you're heading down Tilden Road towards oh. towards Wampatec School and the, and the road's frozen and the yeah. guy's using some water to do that, yeah. he's literally making ice. Yeah. It's like a Zamboni. Like <laughs> well, with all those kids walking to school. Well, this was early, but it's still, and, and yeah. so I'm like, yeah. you know, there's a cop out there, you know, directing traffic around yeah, the... But there is a cop there. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So again, it's, 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 I think people really paying attention to some of these pieces and using some, some um, the entry upkeeps, drains, the sweeper. I think those are the big ones. Just keep everything. And I, I think, you know, maybe it's good for us to know who, along with looking at the potential for any siltation or whatever. Um, I'm assuming that Amy and Karen know the chain of command for you guys, so we know who. Uh, I'm, I'm using the number one point of contact <laughs> with, with, with Karen and, and, and Amy, of course, okay. to contact myself or, or Scott and Keith. Or Keith yeah. Well, it's good to, you know, I, I, I get it. You know, you want to try to get this thing pulled together before you lose the, that window of opportunity, but at the same time, it just means that you got to be 
extra diligent. We're running about that four letter word. S yeah. S N O W. It's coming. I, I don't really I think it's a four letter morning. word, but. Um, okay. It. Yeah. Um, how about the how about the uh, the vernal pool? Have you guys um, that addressed that at all? Uh, I I don't believe we, we that I think we thought about doing in a summertime when it was obviously lowest. We did not. I don't believe we did tackle that that I can recall uh, this past summer. We really hadn't really delved into anything in phase two at that time. Right. So I, I think more appropriately so this thereabouts this summer. I'd have to look. I think we ordered this. I think we ordered the sign. I'm pretty sure we ordered the signs a while ago. Yeah. Well, at some point, it just you pointed to that area and that detached yeah. area. Yeah. So. yeah, I know the signs is, is uh, 10, 12, whatever. There's a, there's a number of signs part that we agreed to. And some cleanup in there and stuff some like that. Yeah. yeah, I know the signs should be forthcoming. I think it it's a good time to do that when it's fairly dormant um, to get the cleanup Next. and stuff done. Mm -hmm. Next. Summer or late spring. Well, you're not going to do it now. Well, it would be better to do it. Well, it's pretty full. Well, it's a yeah, combination of things. I mean, it, it will be full. You can do it in the summer. Just want, I'll talk to um. Yeah. Talk to LEC. Get some recommendations on the best time. All right. Yeah, we can we can talk to LEC on that. Because when it's frozen, you won't be able to post. I understand that, but you don't want to be in there when no, I can't. there's eggs in there or the hatching or anything no, no, like that. No, no, I get the spring. Right. So, all right. Uh, the other thing is briefly because Amy's uh, been involved with this and better than uh, directly across from the entrance of this, instead of five single family homes, we're going to fill five duplexes and be restricted as 55 and older. El uh, Forsley Whitten reviewed the stormwater and mm -hmm. they reported I have to back myself for that. planning to endeavor that there's yeah, no change in the stormwater. In addition okay. to that, the planning board, this is several, several meetings, and you know, if you have of this, on October 28th, they said, go ahead and do this. And in the words, of, it was an insignificant change. Uh, the reason for that is there's a lot of attributes to this. Uh, one of the reasons is it's going to become part of the 55 old community. So the, and what's happening is actually there's a robust landscaping plan that now that will be managed by the condominium association just like all the other plantings that go along. <coughs> the, the area of disturbance has not changed at all. And so what, what my question was, and Amy, if you copied all this. Wait, wait yeah. which the, the right. conservation commission has off of the floor is the top of the list in our So okay. if there's not a change in the, the work area or the, um, Know, any kind of impact from additional storm water, then it's significant. So <coughs> we don't yeah. Well, it actually, but what Bill just said is that now instead of that maintenance being relied on for individual homeowners and the possibility of individual homeowners maybe encroaching or whatever. Now it's all part of the association. Mm -hmm. So yeah. anybody that does anything out there has got to go before the condo association, which hopefully would be right. a little more diligent. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. There's actually there's actually street lights, and so the whole thing is controlled. And actually, the landscaping plan, Karen, has gone yeah. approved that and, and all of that. So I think it's a net it's, it's a net plus. There's, there's great demand for this. There are the other single family homes if you build the single family. So I just wanted to occur that we don't have to come back for a further file. Not unless there's some big yeah. change. No. Are there conservation markers along the back oh, in the way we do on some of the other projects? I think there is. I think I there is remember. something yeah. in this were conditions. I don't know about there, but in the main body of the site, I think there was something that they called. The main body of the site, I thought there was something. I don't know what the One of the things we're working, we're working forward on also, that the marks behind was already clean. And we're working on what we through the selection office to get this plan, hopefully at the Springtown meeting, transferred to the town. We have. 
you know, on the, on the east side of Halley Road, all the marsh that goes down towards the water. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. Right. And there's also an easement. I mean, we weren't going to talk about this particular because it's going to start going a little bit more complicated. Yeah. But no, Dave, if you've got it, let me can talk about uh, it. I don't have, no, I don't have that. Well, I kind of thought, no, I really don't have that plan. Well, I'll just <laughs> give my synopsis then. <laughs> yeah. So there is an easement that it, is it would be kind of through here. on the south the southernmost side of that house that they need for drainage, but it's it's a, it's an easement to, 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 to the town. Yeah, and it's going to be an easement to the town. But anyways, that actually will 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 probably be a request for determination of applicability. Yeah. So that will be a separate so, filing so that they'll be coming a, in with. The, the extremely quick is there's a there's an ex pre-existing grading issue in Hadley Road, whereby a puddle existing road to the road is actually a low point. Yeah. And there's no way to get that water out of that point in the whole road. And so there's the whole DPW, DPW process of that'll get go into a couple of catch bays and it'll then piped up, we'll go right up to the wetland and there's um, yeah. this engineering behind that of course an extremely simplifying uh, process here, but um, that uh, that's what Right, and process. it will be reviewed by horse and wit and designed by their engineers. But it's going to become a town property. Town infrastructure. Yeah. The, the net result is the substantial, paying the substantial drainage problems on Hadley Road and 6th Avenue, which they rectified. Yeah. I mean, the end of 6th Avenue, I have, I have net, ever since we finished the pipe, it's, it's like night and day. It's not a yeah. single puddle there anymore. It's, it's amazing how much that has really made a difference. We got it. Do we get a planting plan for all the landscaping? Or I think no? we have one. We have but one. if it's changing, because it's... I, it's not going to change. I think what it means is that the maintenance of it and the upkeep is going to be now part of the association. When they okay. were single-family houses, the ownership of each one of those would be flipped to the homeowner. Mm -hmm. In this case, all that it's open still area... So, right, so I get that. But if it's like a different house... Do you have there a might be new different landscape plan? No. I, I, not on me. There, there was never an approval required in the original landscape plan, as these were. Um, single uh, family homes. Yes, yeah, single family homes. Right. And, and, and okay. homes. So is the planning board now wanting to see the landscape plans? Uh, I, mean, I know have, that the grading is similar. They have seen the plans. Uh, I've shown them what we intend to do, and I believe. Yeah, number nine in the decision says so any of the landscaping plans have got to be. Approved by uh, Karen Joseph for us next for peace and that. Yeah, that so we have yet to see those. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, we in other words, those those thank you. I have submitted what we have uh, what was done. Yes. Well, the to Jen's point, I mean, it would be good for us to see those as well. And if there's anything, I mean, are, there, are, there any, are they a buffer to anything? No, 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 no. Not, nothing, no buffer, nothing, uh, nothing in the front of the side of this. It's that foundation plan. And street plans. But the area that's in back of these houses right. was the old road that was removed and things like yep. that. So, yep. to my recollection, there is some sort of restoration. Uh, nothing, nothing in the back on restorative planning in the back. Um, it, it's just, uh, it was just, there's a, a pre approved li limit of disturbance, and that would have just, uh, under the previous plan and under the current plan, would just be one turf right after the limit of disturbance. Under, under both scenarios. No changes under both conditions. So what happens, so we got the condo association, it's budgeted, so it's it's maintained along with everything proposed if you got an individual homeowner might decide whether they're gonna maintain or not. Can you, can you flip back to the other page for a second? So where's the so where's the the fifty and the one hundred? So you're outside of the one hundred. Right. Uh, we have the limit of disturbance is right here. Which is the fifty. Well, it's inside the fifty. Well, 
in some instances it is. It is because there was, there was a, a concrete, road. Yeah, it was a concrete road that was. That's yeah, true. There was a concrete road. I mean, this entire area was basically. So when the when the concrete gets removed, which it's all already right. been gone. Removed. So then you've spread some rough, uh, rough fill and um, rough fill at the moment, which is like a loamy, silty fill. Yeah. Um, it's been currently stabilized with, with hydro seed at the moment. Um, and, you know, the plan would always be that those would be single family. Originally, the, the whole plan where those would be single family lots, and they'd just be, um, you know, they'd, they'd just be hydro seeded up to the limit of disturbance. Okay. And we're not proposing any any changes to the original plan in that regards. It would be great to ensure that there's conservation markers along that back line. I mean, I get like the, the benefit of it being managed, so totally on board with that. It's just more, now there's actually, instead of having three or however many homeowners I understand, it's actually double that and maybe they Sure. Don't feel that same sense of ownership. So having the markers feels really beneficial to me. I'm trying to think in my brain of it would be the markers. I don't feel like it did cover markers behind the single family homes. No, it, no, I don't think it did. I think it did. It, 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 I feel like there maybe was mention of markers in the within the condo site for some reason. Well, we wanted markers where the um, restoration was, then, you know, we wanted to be not to quit talking. You, you say that because it's all in a condo association that it's okay, but the problem that comes to light is with combines, and that adjoins our town forest. And for whatever reason, a couple of residents there have felt compelled to go out and clear land on the town forest. Well, so that was, that was a number of years ago. Well, not well, it wasn't that long ago. Pretty recently. It was the last few years, maybe. Um, well, no, it was before I was here because it was I've just been here. Before. Just before, yeah. Just before. Yeah. I mean, I guess they, the now the new the condo trees. guys are call me up and ask, but I, I know what you're saying for sure. So just when we say that it won't happen because it's in the condo association. Let us take a look at some of the markers. We'll talk to Mark. Okay. Right. Oh, great. Inevitably, what's going to happen is that the owners of the, those properties are going to think that the marsh is too scraggly looking and they're going to want to clean it up because we get that a lot. So the markers would be great. The markers would be great. Well, maybe we could get a bunch of volunteers to help us keep the marsh clean. That would really be good. There's a bunch really of people. The they're all retired. they got plenty of time on their hands. You, you know, <laughs> you, you laugh, but it, it, in, in, our, in our communities, we'll often get, you know, a lot of interest groups that will do charity work, and they'll have, yeah. you know, chess club, book club, and uh, you, you, you might be surprised that you may actually find some volunteers in the might actually do something like that. There we go. Like <laughs> well, That's good. Not speaking for 300 people, though. All right. Okay. Good enough. Hey, thank you thank very much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Can we jump? Um, can um, we get one other? We, well, we got a certificate of, of compliance. I think is what he wants to do for uh, Clap Road 214. Well, I was getting to that. Oh. I, I, I'm, oh. I have to enclose myself, so that's Richard's. Yeah. So yeah, I, know no, gentleman, so I, I know the gentleman. I know the gentleman is here. So. Okay. So you'd be okay with 214. Clap road. That's the one I have to worry about. Can we go out of order and perhaps ask for a? Um, we well, guys don't vote on them. We don't no, vote we on. Don't them. Vote. Okay. All right. Just let us know. Okay. Yeah. And one and um, 606 CJC is good too. Correct. While I'm at it. Okay. So, so your question will be, do you have a question? They're, they're going to be approved. I just came here in case you had a question. 
Okay. Now it's been over five years, so yep. it's worth it. Sure has. You're all set. All right. Thank you very much. Sorry, I just figured we could clear the room and. All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so, uh, Seven Garfield. Mm hmm. They sent some pictures on Seven Garfield, so that is the uh, home sold. I have some pictures as well. Yes, and Landscaper came in. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, this is down in Hummer Rock. It yep. totally is like wiped it out. out. Right, right, right. So anyways, um, I do have uh, an enforcement order with a uh, requirement for a restoration plan by a professional wetland scientist. Um, we submitted within 20 months. Um, I, saw, I saw that landscaper there right after you sent yeah, out a note. He, I, he was back, and I, I just asked him. I said, don't you know better? And he said, I had no idea, no, which I don't believe for a minute. He told me that the guy told him that he had permits. Yeah. Yeah. And then. But he never asked to see them. He didn't have to see them. And then the guy told me that the oh, guy. he didn't know that he needed a permit to do work on a barrier beach. Uh, so, whatever. Next to a river. So, whatever. So, I think on that one, I guess a question that I had was whether he wanted me. Fine. Yes. I mean, I, I, I think part of the discussion also would have been maybe for Toll Brothers too, although they yeah. have now since left, but it doesn't mean you can't discuss it. Um, I think it was appropriate. Whether or not you want to issue an official enforcement order to them or not. To Toll Brothers? Yeah, to Toll and or to, well, this one, you need it because you just need that assurance that they're going to um, get it back in order. Right now, they have a cease and desist. So. For Garfield. For Garfield. For, for Garfield, my thoughts were yes, they should absolutely be fined, but could it be a sort of like a two tier fine where it's fairly high, but they might get something back once they're, they've fixed everything? Hmm. Oh, that's interesting. I don't know. I like the idea. I just I don't know if it would work or not, but that's what crossed my mind. Is okay, so you give them a thousand dollar fine, but they know, can get. Honestly, I I'm not Why sure not try how it? that would work because the way so so situate wetland bylaw is under the general zoning bylaws, yeah. and it definitely gives us the ability to fine a certain amount per day per offense, and it's cumulative. And we've done this before. We can think of some people that we um, did recently in the last year. Um, pretty substantial fines, but it's the citation is issued on a police ticket, so you actually ticket them, and then it's really handed off to the police. So that's the money doesn't actually go to conservation commission at all; it actually goes into the general fund. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I don't think that we've got the ability to refund. So if you get a speeding ticket, you know, that's a good you know, to have that. they don't give the money back to them. Okay. But, I mean, I could the well, idea or the other thing is, would I guess would be some sort of fine with the threat that if it's not corrected within a period of time, it's going to be a much more significant that, fine. That would be the second way to do it. Yeah, and I mean, the, the fines, I mean, we don't I'm always for that. issue fines. I mean, I know we talk about fines a lot, but if you, if you go to the DEP enforcement manual, I mean, fines, they, they can work against you sometimes, too. You know what I mean? So I, I agree they do set it, send a strong message that you did the wrong thing and you should have known about it. I mean, you just bought a property on a beach, right? So I mean, it's like you have to be able to know that, um, make a call, ask your neighbor, or something like that. But on the other hand, if, if you start getting in more of an adversarial position with somebody, then they're less likely to do what you want them to do and maybe dig their heels in and just be a jerk and look the other way, you know what I mean? And so then, now you're looking at um, like Webster Street or something like that, where I don't know if that was a, actually a fine, but you know, once it becomes adversarial, then you get a lot of nothing. Speaking of that. <laughs> Speaking of that one, nothing has happened. Uh, right, so just food for thought there. I still think finding is better than not. 
Yeah, I, and I like, I like Frank's idea. Small, yeah, actually, give um, a small fine and then if they leave it alone mm -hmm. if they do their job. If they don't, a much bigger fine. Well, could Within it be, a period of time. Right, but could you do, you have a fine, but if you don't get the plan within 30 days, there's another, like. Yeah. We're gonna start finding you more. Right. When we did that with Pat, though, before there was, uh, there was, if I, I'm, I recall correctly, there was certain uh, dollar amount with the police that was allocated towards serving these? Did we ever get, find out if there's gonna be any more? Well, so I think you're talking about something different. So we had a budget item in, in the budget for a while, which was going to go to um, a ranked up effort to have a part-time police officer go serve people. Yes, right. But so that budget item has since been removed by the board's so but I, I think if process. if we decide to find someone or give them notification, so clients could have paid for. It. But 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 what right. Amy does have the option the to do, to she could write up the fine and stuff. And now they have um, um, Craig Keefe who's doing mm -hmm. a bunch of stuff, and there's no reason that Amy can't contact him, and they could go together to issue that if if she felt the need to do that. Well, and on this one, if we find it, it's just, it's a, I write up a ticket and I send it over to Lindsay yeah. of the police department and then she mails off the citation. But I think sometimes if you're trying to drive something home and you really want someone to stop, you know, you're in plain clothes, you just walk out there, I say I'm from the conservation, whatever, but oftentimes I've found it's better if you can get someone in uniform yeah. to show up, and in this case now, Craig, is part of that, and I think it wouldn't hurt to utilize them. He could understand more right. what what that role is, and if for some reason you're not here or whatever, and he understands that. And I think the police, when we met him and we talked about his role, that was one of the things I think Mark Thompson said we would have the option to, to do if we needed to. So right, and when I went away in um, the end of October, he was back up in case a situation developed. Um, so, thankfully, not one did. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, so, so for, for Toll Brothers with the for the viol right. the violation, I, I'd really like to know if there was it. Clearly, there was silt coming off the site. They've explained it. It's. I get why it happened. I don't. I, I still think that they own a good part of that. Mm -hmm. You know, they could have managed that better. They have to be on, and it seems, it still seems to me like every time everybody's got this real urgency to get stuff done, somebody drops the ball somewhere and then we get a storm event, which is what they're not supposed to do. Mm -hmm. So I think it would be, would have more meaning or, or teeth or whatever if we knew that there was actually damage from that. And, and it's fairly easy to see. I mean, you should be able to go to areas like across from Tilden Road, where all that drainage goes in. There's a swale on the other side of the road, and if silt ran out of there, it should be fairly evident on the opposite side of Tilden Road. And if it did, then we have to decide what would happen with that. But and then if there's siltation, or there is siltation that's run on the other direction. Where did it go? Uh, I think to your point, a lot of it where there's so much rain, what happened before is that it gets flushed out of the pipes. Unfortunately, it winds up in the ocean. And that's you know not healthy. Fortunately, it's not a time of year when it's as critical, but, and, and stuff is constantly being flushed out of the road and onto the, to that. You know, we don't have these basins along Hatherley that have the second flushing system you know they just go into a basin then a pipe and they keep going sometimes some of the sediment falls down and maybe they should maybe they should be out pumping all those basins as a way to remove that sediment so that might not be a bad thing to have them do mm -hmm. you know just like well, the sweeper they can pay someone to come and, out the and suck out all the sediment that's gone into those basins that's yeah good, no, that's, that's a good idea good idea so one thing I don't think we necessarily throw home the point on that one, but this is definitely 
it's not like just we're going to talk about it and stop talking about it. So we're going to keep talking about it, and we're going to see how street squeezing once they yep. you know, ramp that up, if that makes a difference. Yeah. I have seen a different okay. machine there. If it doesn't, then we're talking about a wheel wash station. Yep. And I think that would be difficult to execute. Uh, based on the site conditions in our conversations with Dave, but you know, so we're we're going to keep talking about it and keep keep um, talking to them. The planning board did find them, just so you know. Okay. Um, so they they don't have the ability to find as good as we do, at, like as far as like you know, like per day and amounts. But yeah. they they did get us tickets in the mail just I think today. Okay. Said he opened them up and. Yep, but I, I think look, I think we need to let's follow up on what we know might have happened. Yeah, so we'll uh, try to see if there's any evidence that we can see. Okay. There, there. I know that at the outfall to the ocean, by the time we got there, there was just too much, and it, it, there was nothing that looked clean. Right. You know what I mean? So that looked okay, but we'll see. Yeah, but I think cleaning out the basins and we'll check on the tiller road side. Yeah. Hopefully this is going to stop. Yeah. Okay, and so on that... Actually, I'd rather have it keep raining than snow. So. Garfield. We're going to get snow. Yep. you want to just take a vote to ratify that enforcement order? I think that's important. Take a motion to ratify the enforcement order. Make a motion that yeah, we... Identify the enforcement order. At seven Garfield. Seven Garfield. Yep. Oh, second. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Okay. And then the orders. Yeah. I make a motion to accept the orders as written. At three fourteen Central Lab that was accepted. Second. second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. I make a motion we accept the orders as written. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good. A um, couple other quick ones. Um, so we're, we're, we've got a, a, a contractor um, notified that we can actually go forward um, and we're waiting for the board of select to sign that contract. Yes, what happened last week was that because it was a holiday, unknown to our engineers, Lorraine had to have the agenda posted on Tuesday, I guess. Well, they didn't get it into then, so it will not be on this. I know. What, what can I say? But at least it's, yeah, we're it, almost it's, there. Um, it's, Everything's ready to go. It just has to be put on the agenda. They thought they had to the end of the week. Yeah. I've got an email from one of the family members that sold a piece of property to the town um, to be preserved, and they were sort of discouraged that so much time has gone by and things haven't been done and all that sort of. And I explained the whole process going way back to funding and all that sort of stuff, but it is a long time. So it has been a long time, but you know it's just how it worked out. At least it is within inches of being done. And then I um, ran into this lady that was walking after Thanksgiving and I let her park in the driveway and walk up and she came back so thrilled. Yeah. She had been on the new trail that was uh, yeah and so happy and appreciative and wanted to say thanks to everybody that was involved in doing all that. So that's always feels yeah. good. It's all gonna be good. It's just it has been a long process of leaving and I think we've all been frustrated. Um, okay. Did you see my text about December fourth, eight forty five yes. town hall wildlands? Yep. Okay. Oh, 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 that's this week. Yeah. Yeah. It's Thursday. Not tomorrow, it's Wednesday. Wednesday. So Thursday, on Wednesday. 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 Eight forty-five. Where are we meeting? Right here at Town Hall. So if anybody else has an interest in in that, we're going to be meeting with the folks from Wildlands Trust on a few of these property exchanges with the town. Oh, yeah. 
It's the Ellis Estate swap, the, right, those right. properties. And, um, they have so they typically come with a number of their board members, and they like to get an overview of the property. Well, they, you know, they walk the property, and then they go back and decide whether they're going to do the conservation restriction or not. They just don't automatically. Is there a risk they're going to say no? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's fun sitting between you two. <laughs> See, I they, told you to be fun. I, I mean, <laughs> oh, I won't tell her. Tell her. <laughs> no, I've never met any of them. I, I haven't walked the property with them or talked to Scott. Or, oh, yeah. The three of us will go to couples therapy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, any questions about the approvals for Driftway Park? Yes. So, okay, so that PO is probably in staff, but you guys are going to be signing either that or it was just mailed off to the um, contractor. Oh, okay. Just to fix up the uh, PO Gen Mill contractor out yeah, there. The PO yeah. for the um, contractor. So, what so was his name? Um, was it a Hearn? Warren. Warren Cowling. Cowling? Yeah. Yes, it's been approved and. Okay, great. I'll follow I think up. you might even have a check. Oh, I mean, great. I don't think it doesn't work that way. But I mean, <laughs> no, no, so, no, somebody no. should notify you. I will follow <laughs> up. Yeah. It wasn't a lot of No, it was like $1,800. Right. No, it, that was, that was um, a couple weeks ago. We'll send Jenna up to negotiate all these. You should have been going the wrong. I love negotiate. That's in here. Well, right. So and that's, you know what? Because it happened right after our meeting. So just sitting in this pile for a few weeks. But we had that one was easy because we have a fund. We have right. that conservation yep. driftway fund. Just want to get that out there before the guy freezes to death while he goes. I know. Yeah. Okay. okay. Oh, that's great. What else? Okay. I don't think Richard? Um, Got nothing. Lisa? The house. I have so much to talk about tonight. Um, the on Glades Road that was digging under the foundation. Yes. Um, they have put up blockers so you can't see what's happening under the house. So it might be worth. Well, all right. What number is that? That's the one that was. No. Doesn't have to think that they have no permit, no building with nobody. Right. <coughs> One thirteen or something. One fifteen or one thirteen. Okay, I'll talk to Bob Lobo about that. And I will they're replacing windows as well. More on how they work. Yeah, yep. I know. I know that they were instructed not to do anything. In fact, huh? the guy even called. Yeah. Somehow I don't understand how there's such a disconnect sometimes. Maybe an enforcement order would help. Maybe. Yes. For the fines. For the fine. All right. Yeah. I'm, I'm done now. All right. A motion to adjourn. Take a second. Getting a really bad cramp in my leg. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.